here now to, to react, Carol Markowitz, New York Post columnist. Carol, great to have you on. The, the, the opinion piece from the Post, I think, probably gets it right. This seems like a, a statement by Randy Weingarten that is completely out of touch with what yeah. parents of children who haven't been in school feel. Your thoughts? Yeah. Well, let's be real. If the teachers are tired, it's Randy Weingarten's fault. The schools opened in areas all over the country that did not have hard union control. It, when the union was in control, the school did not open. When the union was strong, the school did not open. When the politicians were too weak to stand up to the unions, the school did not open. But schools did open in so many places all across the country, just not places where she had influence. So if the teachers are exhausted from all the remote teaching and some in-person teaching and some combination of both, it's because she did that to them. And every teacher I know in real life has wanted to be in the classroom and listen to their union and did what their union told them to do in terms of remote learning. So I love teachers. I respect teachers. I absolutely think they want to be in the classroom. Randy Weingarten needs to get out of their way. Carol, you nailed it. It's really not even about the educators so much as it's about the education institution. It's about the leaders on the administrative side who are giving marching orders to educators that you're yeah. right, they don't even want in many cases. But you also got it right, teachers end up marching to those orders. At what point do public school teachers say, you know what, we're being misrepresented here? It's, it's a really tough thing to do to stand up to your union. I'd like to see it happen. And we saw it in small uh, numbers across the time of the pandemic where teachers did speak out and say, I want to be back in the classroom. But it's very hard to speak up to the union, especially, you know, parents found it really hard to, to stand up to the union and say, I want my kids in schools because they were, they were faced with, you want teachers to die. Well, if you're a teacher, that gets even harder. You want your coworkers to die, and now you have a problem at your school building. It's a really tough call for teachers. You know, we were just talking about vaccines a second ago, and we're getting all sorts of talk about schools fully reopening in the fall. But I know a lot of parents are saying, you just wait. You just wait till the fall gets here, and they're going to tell me after the school year started, you know what, it's, it's flu season, it's cold season. Uh, okay. Your kid's going to need to get a vaccine if they want to stay in school. Do you expect that kind of flip-flop to happen? I'm very worried about the fall. I would love to be celebrating the news. Oh, great. All schools in New York are opening in the fall. Schools in other areas are opening in the fall. But the truth is the CDC still mandates three feet of separation between kids, which is ridiculous and completely unnecessary. And schools in Europe dropped that back in September. Uh, but right now, that's still the rule. And if schools follow it, schools like in New York City, where there's not a lot of space, they don't have the room to be three feet between kids. So I don't see how they go back to full time. In New York, for example, 60% of the kids are still remote. That's why they have space right now. But in the fall, when those kids opt back into the system, I really don't have that much faith in school reopening on time. Carol, bringing a lot of clarity and common sense. Thanks so much for your thoughts today. Thank you so much. Thank you.